the media, the representatives of the Ministry of Agriculture, the ITC, and um, representing Cardi. Some time ago, we had engaged the agriculture program at the State College. Um, as we build capacity in along the value chain to that will contribute to improving the production of photos on on the island. And we realize that the young minds like yours, um, it's important to feel that is required should you um, decide to go into agriculture, farming for, for um, my example. And so you, you, many of you would have recalled that um, you were part of a, a training in Warner on integrated pest management um, in coconut nurseries. And this is, is a follow-up to that initial training. But this time we will be dealing with coconut propagation and management. So you have seen the industry, you have seen the issues, the pest issues um, of relevance in the industry, and now we are looking at how you go about producing the plants. Um, this is not something that can be done in the tail in the field, hence the need for a classroom session, and thereafter a small demonstration of how field establishment is done. Right? For this, for the purposes of that training, um, we will have, um, we will dispense technical information from, from CADI and from the Ministry of Agriculture. CADI in, in the person of me. I, I will be presenting on, on, from the technical information that was developed by an agronomist um, based in Belize, we've been modifying it for the Dominican um, scenario. And the ministry represented by um, Extension Officer Kester Williams will present on his exposure to his exposure to in vitro indexing. So this is what is gonna happen um, during the, the time that we have um, this afternoon. So I want to ask you to pay um, attention to what is being discussed. You would have received your, uh, your pre-evaluation. It's, it's a small test that is designed to capture what you know on the subject. And at the end of the sessions, you will have a post-test, which is the same questions, and you will receive them. Again, to capture how much has, has changed in, 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 in your knowledge on the subject. So without much more to say, I want to invite Shanita John. She's the national coordinator for the for the project. To give you some brief remarks. Thank you very much. Well, the students, I'm happy that you you could have this um, time to get with you. My name is Shanita John, and I am the national coordinator for the analysis for the development of the Caribbean project. That project is funded by the European Union and we are implemented it from the International Trade Center, ITC, in partnership with CARI and our important partners such as the Ministry of Agriculture. And today it's the Dominica State College. I will not waste more time in giving you a long, long speech, but to encourage you to um, follow the, the technical information that we're going to be going to share with you today. And as much as possible, put it in practice, and I hope that. That will be your start in the coconut industry, especially this year. I'll be celebrating, we'll be celebrating coconut, World coconut day in September, earlier um, in September. And the theme this year was growing coconut for a better future and life. And that you always hear young people are the future and so on and so forth. So we hope that today's session, including the practical, will really cause you to be more enthusiastic about planting coconuts and being part of our. Um, the whole development of the coconut industry in Dominica and the Caribbean. So thank you very much for your time and for your listening here.
some brief remarks from the from Keston Williams. He's representing the Minister of Budget. Okay, good morning everybody. My name is Keston Williams. Um, extension officer on the West Coast. So basically what I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain a little bit about um, in vitro, um, which is um, tissue culture or micro, micro propagation, but we're going to, I'm going to explain it based on my experience in Mexico using um, coconut plants, how we go about doing that. Before we start our, our technical session, I just want to let you to put your knees. Um, yeah. I know you you're familiar with our offices, um, but I don't want to get more familiar with you because um, I was a student of that college some years ago. So was Yasin. So was Kester. All of us. So was Shanita. But I know the three of us are products of Harry Potter Program. Right? And so, with that commonality, I hope you feel comfortable with us, right? Because we will at one time in the best, as you are, I have to present it to us. So let me just present some of them. Let me just present Yasmin John. Yasmin, Yasmin is our consultant, our technical consultant on the project. We have Ms. Ms. Linda. Is representing the plant protection project services. Um, the project is implemented in close collaboration with all the partners to make our government get one stage. Right? So let us go straight now into the, the presentation. I mentioned earlier that the first presentation is, is adopted from material that was has been prepared by Cardi that has been adjusted to our local situation. Right? I know. Allow me to see. Presentation is it covers the process from the selection of planting material all the way to the plants being ready for the field, and then we we'll touch very briefly on establishing it in the field. To start off. Agriculture production in general and, and the management practices, the results from what we have observed um, in very low productivity, low production and low productivity. Right? And so the success of the coconut industry or any coconut venture in Dominica, it really begins with. What produces the raw material? And that is the plant. So the good selection of good quality planting material. This is the cornerstone to good production of coconuts. And so we will touch on some of the methods of, 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 of producing good quality material. There are two general methods. One is the 
One is the propagation in the lab, which um, Mr. Williams will be speaking to. Uh, very commonly, we call it, um, it is known as tissue culture. And everything is done in the lab. You know, all initiation, all the multiplication, and so forth, in the lab. And then the very small, small plant is transferred to a nursery, just like a, a baby. You know, a baby, a primitive baby, is not uh, put out in the open like that. You normally go through a, a process of real tender care to harden that baby before it goes out. It's a, it's a similar principle with, um, with tissue culture plants and coconuts being just one such example. And then we have the other, another method is the in vitro, in vivo method, which is production in the field, really. Vivo being live, or in the field. So I will speak, I will, I will speak to that uh, in vivo method. We will start by defining the seed. We'll start by defining the seed. And um, the seed, the seed in relation to coconuts is the propagative plant structure. All right? And in the case of the coconut, it's, 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 it's a dry seed. And this is the material that is used for in vivo propagation. Now, why is coconut? Why is, is coconut a seed? Why do we call a coconut a seed? Well, it is a seed because it is the reproductive part of the, of, of the plant, of the tree. It's also a fruit because it is, it is a fibrous one seed root. And it is also a nut because, by definition, a nut is a one seeded fruit. And so, a coconut encompasses all of those definitions. And so it, 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 it is a real, a real seed. Now, some things that you need to look for when you're um, selecting a coconut seed um, is that the, the mature nut must be harvested at a certain stage of maturity, all right? And so when you look at a coconut bunch, when one of the nuts on that bunch is dry, all the, bun all the nuts on that bunch have reached the maturity stage that they can be used for, to, to propagate. Right? So you do not have to wait for, you do not have to wait for all the nuts on a bunch to be dry for those nuts to be considered mature enough to propagate. These Nuts must come from, from, if it's from a tall tree, they, they will be about, at that stage, they will be about 11 to 12 months from the time the flower came out in the plant. And if it's from a dwarf, they will be about 10 to 11 months. So at, for, for that length of time, the nuts will have reached maturity from the time the flower, the flower emerged. And we, have, we just have some representation of, of what the, a seed looks like, coconut seed, a dry one at that. All right? The external features of it, and if one is, one is cut open, you can see the developing seed in it. And the next slide will give, you, will give some more detail of that developing um, seed. Now, on this slide, you can see it, it, it shows the different parts of the that seed, that coconut seed. Um, if you look, um, the, the part that you will feel is the exopart. The part which um, we eat, what we call the, the flesh of the coconut. Do you know what, what it's called? Look at this line. Hmm? The flesh, the fleshy part. Tester. The tester. All right? All right? Tester. Who's so you follow it? And then 
if the knot stays long enough on the ground, mm -hmm. you will have something developing in it that will eventually emerge as a, a plant. And how do you call that? Based on the slide that you see. It's the, the end of school. All right? The end of school. Okay. Now, let's go through the process. The process of selecting selecting uh, good quality knots for propagation. Well, you first start with the, the mother palm. All right? Now, the palm must have the desirable characteristics that they looking for. So if you're looking, if you want to have to propagate a uh, green dwarf coconuts, would you choose seeds from would you choose nuts from a yellow a, ye a yellow dwarf? No. Is the characteristic that you want, the kind of variety that you want. So you you choose it from a mother palm, a mother plant that has those characteristics. That's that some, of, some of the other things that you need to do. You need to harvest. You need to harvest, select, and store the nuts. All right? You need to select the site that you're going to do the propagation on. You call it this this site. You need to prepare the seed bed. All right? And you need to um, plant in the selected variety that you're looking for, the selected um, Nuts that you, you you have from those that you stored, then you plant them in the nursery. That's thanks. Then from the nursery, after after the nursery, you can there is a, a, a stage, a step that is called a, a pre-nursery, but we do not generally do that in Dominica. So from the nursery, it goes out into the, into the field, all right? And then you maintain, you, may, you, 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 you may, just how you maintain it in the nursery, you maintain it in the field, all right? And throughout the process, the signage is important. You need to know what is there, and that shouldn't be in your mind, because, um, you know, we forget, Things that mixed up. So when you're establishing your nursery, um, when you, you put your nuts in, you put a sign saying this is dwarf. Well, you say dwarf, yellow dwarf. If another bed has green, green dwarf, and so on. All right. So it's size is important. And as the plants develop, you also you, you need to take records. All right. So you could either have a, a, a physical data sheet or an electronic data sheet, and you take the kind of information that you think for you, you want. The dates planted, treatment supplied, or all these kind of things, the growth and so on. So you take the kind of information that would um, that is required. Now, let me just show you what um, the palm should look like. A good mother palm. Um, from the pictures, you can see um, that it is a heavy bearer. All right, so you you will not want to choose um, from a plant that if the potential is mm -hmm. going to be uh, have 16 nuts in a bunch, mm -hmm. and you see that 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 plant has five or six, and that is consistent on the plant, you will not want to use from that 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 that, that plant that is bearing uh, so 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 low. And what do you think might be the reason for that? Why would you reject a plant like that? If a uh, low amount of that? Huh? If a low amount? Yeah, why would you, why would you not select that? So it probably exemplifies how much you can do. So you can avoid it. Okay. Or what result, if you, let's just say you use nuts from that, from mm -hmm. that plant, what, and, and you, produ you produce seedlings from that? What kind of production do you think you would get from these seedlings from that tree? As a single result from the mother palm. Right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. 
And so you see the need to select your model patterns carefully, all right, to get the results that you want, all right? So it is not wise to simply buy us a plant without knowing the history of the parent plant, all right? Because you, can, you, you, you may produce, you may, you may plant all that plant, and in three years, three years, three, from the minimum three years, when you're expecting a reasonable yield from that plant, you realize, hey, I'm looking to go from, from the yeah. bunch, you know? It's really a waste, a waste of time, you know? <laughs> All right, so, so it's important to, to, to have that kind of information on the, on the model plant. And some of the other qualities, some of the other characteristics would be um, the age, can the, plant, can the model plant can be too young, um, the, how it looks. So if it is crooked and so on, you tend to you should avoid that as a as a, as a parent plant, as a source of, of your plant material. Um, also, the the number of leaves, open leaves, is also important because it tells of the productivity of that plant. All right. Now some of the varieties I'm mentioning, mentioning varieties, and some of those varieties that we have are the, the dwarfs, the the yellow, the green and the orange are very common. And then you also have the tops. Um, the, the, the dwarfs are most, mostly used to produce water. The tops mostly for oil. There is a variety in the region, in Japan, which is dual purpose. It is ideal for water. It is also good for, for oil as well. All right? So different varieties uh, have been, they, they have different um, end uses for these varieties. All right? So if, you want to grow coconuts for this oil, you, it, will, it will not make sense to go and plant dwarf coconuts on your food, if that's what you want, all right? Now, the, the water palm must be free of pests, you know? Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the photo, you can see the nuts are heavily infested. One on, on, on one of the photos, you see it's mites, the other is skills. Now, if you were to to propagate that, you what you are actually doing is just continue the cycle of those skills, right? So, in selection, you look for um, nuts that are fairly free from any major pesticides. And so then we still speak of after these nuts are harvested, they they are stored and for the storage time, it varies on the varieties. The, the dwarfs will vary for up to 10 minutes, you can store for 10 minutes, up to 10 days. Um, the the tolls for up to 20 days, all right? 20, 21 days. So you've identified other palms, you've collected your nuts, you've stored them. The next thing is to plant them out, but, but before that, you have to select a site for doing that, and there are some characters, there, there are some things that that site must have. It must be, for one, it must be um, well drained, so you don't want to plant out your nuts in an area that is prone to flood, all right? Um, the, must be getting a lot of lights and sunlight, adequate sunlight and water. Um, the pH has to be a certain level, 5.5 to 7, all right? And you will not want to establish your nursery close to um, other, plant, other, other coconuts that are heavily infested with pest and diseases. And it makes sense because you don't want it being transferred to your nursery. Okay? And that's just a, 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 a picture of what a nursery, a typical nursery, um, a small nursery in our settings. Might look like you can see some some shade being provided as well for the plants, and of course the labeling we talk about, and importantly, it should have plants of deep at different stages of development, all right? So you can start your planting. Then you prepare beds, and the beds there's some dimensions. You don't want to make a bed that is too wide, so that you cannot reach the plants in the middle. So the on average, beds can be about two, two meters, two meters wide. All right. So if you if you're on one end of the bed, you can reach into the in, at least into the center 
You go on the other side of the bed, you reach into the other side. All right? So if you, if you are doing any operation, you need to cup to reach all the plants. Now, how do you plant? How do you plant? How do you plant? How do you establish your your nuts? Well, they can be either horizontal, you can place them either horizontally, vertically, or slightly tilted. And and then you cover the, the nuts um, with two foot, two of the nuts. You cover it with a, a margin material. And let me just show you um, what the in terms of the placement of the nuts, what it looks like. This is what this is what the placement. Um, will look like uh, if it's um, diagonal or slightly tilted. You can see that um, the, the horizontal is flat and the vertical is, is straight up like that. And there are advantages and different and disadvantages for each of those um, different positionings of 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 of, of, the, of the symbol. In terms of maintenance, so you plant in, they've germinated, and the seedlings are coming up. Some of the basic things that you do for all crops, you have to do that for coconuts as well. So you, so you water, you weed, you inspect regularly for pest, pest and diseases. Um, sometimes we, feel, we have that uh, misconception that coconut is a high crop, and so we, it is left unattended. All right? Hardy, yes. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a crop, and it needs the attention that is required for it to develop at the, the rate that is useful and to produce the kind of quality that is that is required for establishing a, a good quality plant. So, question? Yes. So, roughly, for what how much water is supposed to apply to see? Well, it depends. Depends. It, it depends on the for what the area is doing. Uh, for example, as long as we mourn, uh, the amount of water that is required in Mona will be much less than the water than the amount required from the street is down in the in Kenny Field or Rosal. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it all depends. Yes, the industry operator will make that judgment call. There may be there, there may be weeks when you never have to apply water. And there may be periods of time when every day you may have to um, spring. Alright? Good. All right. So, um, in terms of the the time frame from starting the nursery to the plants being ready for the field, we have that um, demonstrated and shown um, on the board. So, from the time that the nut is collected to the time that we have more than 50% germination of those nuts. We have for the it varies for the for, for the different varieties. So the dwarfs um, from zero to three months, you most of the nuts would have, would have germinated. By towards the end of the three months, most of the nuts would have, would have germinated. And the tolls more towards the end of the fourth month. So there's a, a, a almost entire month difference um, between those two varieties in terms of germination. And then, in terms of being ready for the, for the field, um, it can go to as much as, as nine months. So, from the time of establishing those nuts in this, right? Okay. So, but there, so one study has shown that um, um, planting the nuts four to seven months after it is it was established is the is the ideal time. And that has to do with the, the leaf to root ratio of the plant and the ability of the plant to adapt to the conditions outside. All right, so now we will move to the some of what is required for, for the plants being outside. All right? Um, the plants, coconuts, should be planted in, in a depressed, a depressed um, area. So we, it's referred as a pit, and the size, there is an optimal size, but again, it varies. It will vary, all right? Um, you dig that pit, and the nuts are placed in, and the, the plant is placed in, and filled in, filled in with, 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 with the soil. The spacing generally is um, for planting coconuts. 
is 7.5 meters by 7.5, and that would probably would be about 177 uh, plants. That is, if you want your coconuts um, planted in a very intensive manner. But if you want it on the border, it can be done, plant it closer or wider, again, again, it depends on the property system that you have. And this, this shows the, I mentioned the peat, it illustrates how it is planted out in the peat. All right? It's also recommended to put some material to cover the, the soil after, after you fill up the peat to, to the required level, to cover it with some material that will conserve moisture. And so reduce your need for having to irrigate the plants um, when they are put up in the field. Okay. So, I've really covered the propagation, the in vivo propagation of um, coconut uh, from, the, from the selection of the, of the mother palm, the mother plant, all the way down to um, the establishment in the field. And so, I want to thank, thank you for um, your attention and participation. And uh, move over to for Keston. Who will, who will present as only on the in vitro. So um, I will entertain a few um, questions. So just uh, you can consider that motion then? Or the different it's a type of motion. Oh, okay. so it's, it's, I mean, the material used in there is for on us, but the budget, because it covers the soil, it will, it will uh, minimize weed growth, okay. it will conserve moisture, all right? All right so. Anything else? All right, so thanks. So let me just close that. Close and big wave, big wave for Keston. If you, well, we will share that presentation with your, with your lecturer, all right? And so you will have a material in your home. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. to stretch. Are we ready to go? Yes, yeah. All right. Yeah. We're going to jump straight into that. I put a few pictures of the stuff, but I may still go on the... Um... All right. So, let me start off. In 2020, I went to Yucatan in Mexico. That is on the eastern border, close to Veracruz. There is a place there were a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, miles, miles of coconuts. So I went there, we did the in vivo cultivation, but we also did some in vitro cultivation, which by now I thought we'd be doing that in Dominica, but yet still we're not, we not yet start doing that. So the, what happened is in Mexico, they tried and strengthen because of the hurricanes. We always get more hurricanes, a lot of countries get devastated, so they try and strengthen the um, coconut industry. Okay, so we went to Mexico to visit the, um, the university. All right, as we know, Hurricane Maria in 2017, I think everyone there was alive for that. Hurricane Maria, you see what happened to Dominica, all the coconut trees, everything was devastated. People don't get a coconut to drink, well, some of us, some people had access to, to the fuel out there, but for all we had, when you used to come with every time I come with a fire, I would have a bottle of water because mm -hmm. for me personally, I'd rather drink coconut water than water. So, anyway, coconut, I did a, a little info on coconut. The coconut, the um, scientific name is Cocos Nucifera. It is a member of the palm tree family and it is the only living species of the genus Coco. Now, the coconut can be referred to the tree, the seed, the fruit. And they say the fruit is technically a drip, not a man, really a nut. So now it gets its name from the Portuguese language because as we see the coconut, it have something like two little eyes and a mouth on it, so it's like somebody else, so that's why they get the name coco. Alright. So now, like I said, in um, we had Hurricane Maria in 2017, then we had COVID-19 in 2020 and that just showed us how important it is for us to have food security in the country because first 
We didn't have any coconut trees. We didn't have any nurseries, anything to say like, oh boy, that one no coconuts. We are somewhere we can go and get coconuts and distribute to the farm. And everything was just on a standstill. That caused the price of coconut to just go up. Yeah. So we see that we see the importance of coconut in the world. Now, these are some of the countries, approximately the whole world area that was from since 2010, I think we have that information, that the estimated acreage of coconut in the world, 12 million hectares, hectares and not acres. So, so we have, you can see the Philippines, these are the places that have the most of the percentage which they cover for the, um, so in the Caribbean, you can see we're not really, um, that much of a factor, I would say, but we still, it's still a very important industry for us because a lot of farmers, that's where they get their livelihood from. So we're looking at two types of propagation. We just look at the in vivo or propagation, now we're going to look at the in vitro now. That is an example of the in vivo. That is basically, so you can see, that, right, we'll start there. We plant the seed, germinate, sprout, then it goes into a tree and like the cycle basically for in vivo propagation. Now we're not jumping to what I deal with now. In vitro. So basically that can in vitro in the coconut it can be applied technically in almost any plant, right? So you can practically take any part, any tissue from any plant and make form a new plant of it. So the first thing you want to do that is for coconut. So you want to look at the um, selection of the nuts. So you're going to find the tree, you find the characteristics of the tree you like, or you find it is high beer, and if it's a big coconut, it have a lot of water, or if to determine, then you choose which coconut um, you want. So this, that, these are the um, different stages for the um, in vitro. Selection of the nuts, the initiation stage, the germination or the multiplication stage, we have rooting or the treatment stage, and then the acclimatization of the um, coconut. Right. So, like I said, you want to select the best coconut you want to, um, to choose. If it's a short one, a dwarf you want to plant in your yard, so you and you choose which coconut you want. So then you want to plant it. So now, with the coconut, we use in. The embryo, the white part. Now, with the in vivo propagation, normally one coconut will give you one tree. But with that, we will use the embryo, and then first thing you want to do, you take it to the lab, you go to disinfect that. When you go to be in a lab, you go to be working in your workstation, you should have an area with that. Going hot, yes, I still avoid. Um, Contamination. So first thing you do is to disinfect all the coconut to make sure that one no disease, no dirt, nothing, no, nothing on it. So then you're going to take that, you're going to slice it up in pieces. Each piece you take is going to become um, a new coconut. Right. So now we know what are the um, macro and micro nutrients. Right. So what happens for you to create that environment for the coconut? We create a medium or solution. It looks at something like in its final phase when you finish creating it, it looks something like like if you don't want to make jello, it looks something like that. So now what you doing? You get in the um, macro and the micronutrients in the, the pure state. So you would have to um, buy that. So it comes in like in powder form or in liquid form some of them. So now we have the um, distilled amount, so we mix some nitrogen, potassium, all those things. We we'll mix them up in a container, put them in a microwave, let them heat up, and then when you let them cool, you will get something like that. It can be, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be white, it can be different colors depending on what, um, what elements you, um, you put in it. Alright, so now in the multiplication stage, there is a picture from the industry um, visited. So after you take the um, embryo, there is about anywhere from two weeks, three weeks to within one month, you will start to see 
that the plants starting to send out shoot, starting to um, it's alive, it's starting to um, reproduce itself. Then after that, you have the plants after about let's say a month to a month to the second month, and as you can see, that process is way. We we fast people because with the in vivo you probably have to wait about approximately a year, like nine months for both the dwarf and, and the young tall varieties. With that you can have your coconut ready by let's say three months, four months. So you can see here that they start to make um, roots in the um, in the chart, but you have to keep the chart because you don't any other to contaminate it. So they start making um, roots in the jars. After that, you have the acclimatization process. So after you see your coconut, they make roots in the jar. What you want to know, just like you said, a premature baby, you can you know, you just send them outside the living in an incubator for them to um, get strong or to harden. So after you do that, you have to set up a greenhouse, right? So we know what a um, greenhouse does. It provides all the adequate or the optimal temperature, water, soil type, everything for the um, coconut to thrive. So from that, you would put that in the um, greenhouse to let it, um, about a month, two months, let it catch itself. So you would say it. Then after that, you control all the soil humidity, everything. After that, you want to take the coconut and then you can bring it outside and then from there you can um, distribute it to um, to the um, farmers or to whoever at the state goes that are interested in um, coconut. Are we doing this here? You said there's a nursery at um, Gmit. Are we using the Gmit? Is, are we using this one no, here? No, the problem is in Long Nicole, we're not really are doing in, in, in vitro for oh, okay. irrigation yet. So, what we're doing here is in vitro? Yet. What we want to do is in vivo. In vivo vivo means okay. vivo is Spanish like, for yes. life, yes. So. Okay. Any questions? Anyone? Or you can ask me anything because, like I said, I don't want to run for that. It's basic stuff. And mm -hmm. If I have to go into details, it's. Um, it's a lot of information. So I know the basic components for when it is like else? No questions? No questions. I was uh all the way to my first use to stay the usual is it better in your opinion? Well, depending on what you do now, let's say if you are a family and you just have your 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 you want to start. You just go somewhere in the field and just pick up coconut, but like, let's say you get a contract or something and you want to close it, like, let's say, what? You look for something, 500, 800, 1,000, 10,000 coconuts at the same. You cannot stay and wait for a coconut to yeah. take a whole day for it to less. So that one would be better for um, this situation. For the so do we have plans of having a lab for coconut? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been actually, since I came back on school, I've been actually waiting to work in a lab. Uh, that 10 years, so I Ooh. can't answer that for you. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I hope we will have reach to the point where we got that can save us a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So hi, we are thankful that you've stayed with us. I mean, some of you all are lifelong students. So we are happy that you were on the live to learn. Some of you may be farmers and have learned some new techniques in coconut production in Dominica. We are always grateful for you joining us here from the Division of Agriculture, uh, along with our partners, CADI and ITC, um, to just get some more information on new technologies, new techniques, um, innovative ways of production. And as of course, we are striving to become um, resilient. We are striving to be commercial. All our activities are geared towards that. So we do hope that you will go back, look at the live and just learn some techniques. So when your extension officers come, 
you can have some dialogue and discussion and see what you've learned today based on the training that the officers have received from our partners and our counterparts on the overseas. So right now we're going to go into the planting of um, three symbolic um, plants um, just to show the students the actual techniques they've learned and they've heard, sorry, and then we will take it from there. Thank you. Do you want to get the students huh? No? So as we have again, Dorian Etienne is there. And he is the representative Cardi, um, representative in Dominica. Any student of agriculture would know Cardi is means Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute. Dorian, can you tell us the varieties that you have in your hand this as we is, speak? This is a, a Malayan green dwarf. This mm -hmm. is the Malayan orange dwarf. So how do you denote the difference? If you look at the difference, if you look at this difference, the color. All right, All right. So all developing stem, then it's, it's an indication of the, of the, of the varieties. So, so these, the, so what's like that's also, the variety that's good for both oil and water? No. No? Okay. This is the dwarfs, the dwarfs. Oh, these are the dwarfs. Okay, yes, sorry, are sorry, for sorry. water. For water, water. Yes, yes, yes. And we have, we have a tall. Okay. We have a tall here. <laughs> this is for oil. That's for oil. Okay. So we do have, so you've learned something, Imo. <laughs> so we're happy. So um, when it comes to the um nut size th does that matter we see one is bigger than the other well no um variety so there, there's a variety of differences in in, in the nut sizes as well as sometimes in in in, in just in the conditions that the the you plant is, is is exposed to mm -hmm. at the time that <laughs> flowers okay and then not develops so would um affect the size of, of one of critical question do or two i have rather um the when you say dwarf how tall will that tree get will i be able to just stay and pick it with my bare hands not using a stick not using any guys paying any labor at a certain stage <laughs> of its <laughs> development it comes into bearing earlier than the tolls mm -hmm. um but it can eventually get tall taller than you can reach it so any way you can restrict that no <clears throat> no because i've no. seen some nuts when you just pick them with your hand the trees on your level yes yes at that stage of the at that like stage those. at that stage of development the tree the tree would be at that at that height mm -hmm. but the tree continues growing mm -hmm. at a slow rate that the tolls but the tree will continue growing oh. and will eventually reach the height that would not allow you to reach into the canopy but compared to the tolls it's much easier it's much easier and the tolls the tolls grow faster too mm -hmm. yeah. and you also mentioned that it's important that in the nurseries that your siblings be at different um, stages, of development. stages of development. Now that that stood out to me because I mean generally you don't see Finish. that, but to do to get that you would have to start preparing them at different times. Yes, you collect nuts at different stages, okay. at different times. So um, if this month you would collect nuts, you establish them. A month later you collect another set of nuts. So your nursery would have. Always have plants, but at different stages of growth. I think that was most um. So that was to you. Even if lettuce and so on, you find that everybody has a crop around the same time. But yes. Okay, so Imo, you're going to come back to school, I suspect, and you're going to work in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Of course, I have my phone. Okay, great. So we are here with the students. They're all eager and excited. They put away their cell phones, and that's not something that you see with young people, and they're ready to do some planting. Man, minimal manual labor. <laughs> minimal. <laughs> That's how good technology is right now. <laughs> so who's volunteering? We can have we can have um, one of the, the ladies and one of the, the young men. What? Let's go. And again, this is sponsored by Caddy, and it's it's the alliances for coconut industry development in the Caribbean project. Commission. By Caddy and the European Union and the ITC. I want you to do what you want with the camera, you know, you can have to use it. You lower the plant in the hole and then throw some soil, fix on the soil and put on the soil, right? Okay. Can you come in already, eh, fella? Right. So we saw the plant in the field earlier and now. Okay, so you can, so you can go in. So I'll put it, hmm? The bird now? Yeah, just, what I, okay, what I want you to do, hold it, hold, just hold it. Put it, man. You can go in that side. 
And we have here the students engaged in canteen. This is a tall variety. We didn't get to show it to you before. This one is a tall variety. And hence we put them far away from the general walkway, etc. Away from the building. As the camera can see, the whole nut is covered up this time. Not deep enough? Mm -hmm. Not deep enough, fine, after you. Okay. And then you would water, you would you would water it, of course. Right? You would water. Okay. And so the students are responsible to water the plants. Okay, so we haven't forgotten our banana. <laughs> So we have really tried to do an integrated system and I want to say thank you once again for joining us. I mean, the students are elated. I guess they will look at the live later. And um, I want you all to share the live. If you have any friends who are farmers, if you have any friends who are consumers of the coconut, to show them the work that goes, get, that goes into it, the energy and the effort that is needed. And that is all within the cost of production. I want to say thank you very much for continuing to support us in our ventures in our activities and we want to say once again that we are working towards building a resilient cropping system a resilient nation agriculture thank you very much now we're going to get one of the students to give us his feedback of everything that happened today of course good afternoon i'm kurt frederick third year of the I'm the Cassidy College on the agriculture. And he also has his nursery business, so you guys can look out for him. If you want to call it that, but either way. In terms of the presentation today, it was extremely beneficial. And I expanded my knowledge on the coconuts and the pests prior to the visit at Warner. So today was a proper finalization to solidify the knowledge gained. And at a proper exemplifying of the knowledge in the presentation, between how to plant and how to cover it. So it was very well done. Thank you. So once again, this is Emma News and we are saying goodbye from the Dominica State College, Dominica's premier learning institution. Goodbye everyone. Thanks for joining.